Welcome back. Today, I have a friend. I guess we're friends. We've known each other for over a decade. Tim Chaturangsu. That was good. Yeah? Yeah. Bro. I, I mean, just, it wasn't perfect. It, it was wasn't good. perfect. <laughs> I'm still white. I'm still white. You have like an in intense history. I know it. You've been making YouTube videos for longer than I think anyone I know. Of. Yeah. 2007? 2008? 2006. 2006. Yeah. The beginning of the world. Pretty much. When it comes to Yeah, my YouTube, YouTube videos. My current YouTube channel, which I'm still currently uploading on, it will turn 18 in September. Finally legal. How Bro, about that? I know. That is wild. <laughs> so I um, first heard about you in 2012 when I was doing Epic Meal Time. Yeah, word. And we were here for like a short stint living in the Hollywood Hills in like a dumbass mansion. <laughs> and I remember it was like, oh, there's this guy and his name's Tim DeLaghetto and his parents have a Thai restaurant and we want to make a Thai lasagna. Yeah. And then I think in the interim of that, something happened. And I think the next thing we knew that your dad closed the restaurant. Uh, yeah. Um, so I barely even remember this conversation okay. about using my restaurant for okay. one of your guys' videos. Like, I literally barely even remember this. Uh, my parents retired, retired the restaurant like in 2012. We had that Thai food spot, Thai Smile, for like 20 years. And, um, and it was just time, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It was it. great. It was fire, though. I, I, I wish I got to try it. Yeah, you missed it. For that. real. I don't want to go too deep into your name, but like, where'd you get the inspiration for Tim Delaghetto? Oh yeah, Tim Delaghetto. My 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 original YouTube screen name alias. Um, I was a huge Fresh Prince fan. Do it. <laughs> Cannons to the left. Yes. Of me. Oh man, if you know, you know. And look, the older we get, the less people know. Of course. Um, but yeah, I was a huge Fresh Prince fan growing up. I felt like the Fresh Prince was one of my biggest inspirations. Just not only like, you know, I felt like I didn't have a lot of, um. I'm an only child, so yeah. I didn't have, like, an older brother, cool older guy raising me. I felt like the Fresh Prince kind of raised me, mm -hmm. you know, taught me a lot of things about, like, self-confidence and how to approach girls and stuff like that. And I also was really just trying to be, like, the Asian Will Smith as a kid, you know, like, rap, TV, movies. I made a plan, a goal for my life. It was called the Fresh Prince format. I was like, I'm going to do everything Will Smith does, rap, TV, movies. You're not far. Yeah, low-key. You've been, you've done all of that. Well, you know. I, yeah. I'd say you're arguably more popular on the internet than Will Smith is today. <laughs> Minus I mean, the slap, you know? He's a whole influencer now, so I mean. I mean. <laughs> he had to shift. He had no choice, you Yeah, know? true. Um, so, yeah, I kind of, um, well, okay, so a little insider info. Uh, my current channel is like Timothy De La Ghetto 2. Mm -hmm. um, and I had, there was a Timothy De La Ghetto no number, you know what I'm saying? And in one of those videos, I was freestyling just on some bullshit because that's what I just did on my YouTube channel. Just like freestyle and did stupid like impressions of people off like webcam stuff, you know? And I said like, yeah, Timothy De La Ghetto just kind of in a freestyle. And I was like, oh, that's, that has a nice ring to it. Yeah. Um, wait, that's a lie. That doesn't make sense because <laughs> <laughs> there was a channel called Funky Fresh way back. This is 2005. First ever YouTube channel I ever made. Okay. And I had like a handful of subscribers on that, but then someone like guessed my password, which was funky. And then... <laughs> Not original. This was... Damn. Early internet shit, yeah, dog. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I don't give a fuck about this. What is this random website, YouTube? Yeah. You know, Funky Fresh was the channel. Funky was the password. I was uploading a little bullshit, get, getting a he little, little views here and there for like what it was in 2005, yeah. right? And in one of those freestyles, I said, Timothy Dale, I get it. Someone gets that password, delete all my videos. So then I made the original Timothy Dale, I get it. Wait, they got your password, got it, and then deleted everything? Yeah, started what? uploading like bullshit, like dance videos. What like it, it was real camcorder shit, you know? Jesus. Did you ever go back and see if that, that <laughs> channel still exists? You know what? Let's see. Like a bunch of stuff just pops up as funky. For, it's hard to find. But uh, anyway, so you said Timothy Dale, get out in your freestyle. Sick name. Yeah. Definitely blessing in disguise. Clearly. Yeah, so, it, you know, that became, like, you know, my my name, my alias for a long time. People that knew, like, oh, Fresh Prince reference, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was my whole thing. I'm, like, trying to be the Asian Will Smith. I'm trying to just follow in his footsteps as a as a as an entity, you know? For those that are that don't know anything other than Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, <laughs> uh, I think most of the viewers here kind of, like, are in and around our generation. But if you don't know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was, like, it was one of the most unique television shows on, and it was like must see TV. It was like yeah. the best show, one of the best shows on the lineup. Dude, it was so good. Oh, it was so that. good. NBC, man, classic shit. I was so young. Okay, you know? did you ever but watch Seinfeld or is that? I loved Seinfeld. Okay, <laughs> random question. I know yeah. you're a sneakerhead. Uh -huh. I am too. I think mm -hmm. it's generational. The uh -huh. kids are now too, but for different reasons. Who had a better sneaker game, Will or Jerry? <laughs> That's debatable. It is debatable. It is debatable because like, you know, 
if you're not paying attention to Seinfeld, you sleep on the heat. Yep. Jerry was heavy into it. Heavy. Heavy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Will played it out like he had like an outfit to go with it. Jerry was always wearing like it tucked was in shirt with like jeans, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was like secret rich guy sneaker game. Yeah. Like, you know when you just don't know somebody's rich until like you kind of catch a glimpse of their shoes and you're like, oh, those are very rare yeah. Nikes hmm. he has on. <laughs> nice colorway. Where'd you get those? Yeah, yeah. Plus like Jordans back then were the most expensive shoes and he wore a lot of Jordans. Yeah. Agassiz, I think he wore a boat. There's like, there's a comparison chart of mm. will and jerry by the way of like mm. each kicks kith did a photo shoot with jerry seinfeld it was amazing so tight it was yeah. amazing i he got heat for it because he's like old white man but like i loved it please I, he's here one of the original sneakerheads. get Fucking out of here uncultured ass kids, i know it's bro. ridiculous i was i was really um i was one of the only kids in my class that i felt like really fucked with seinfeld like that too though yeah you know i think it was very uh you know it's like such a dry humor it for, was yeah it was know. for the time though yeah there's a lot of stuff like you watch back you're like i don't know doesn't last the test of time. I mean, much like all the TV shows that we grew up watching. Oh, you mean like they didn't age well? Yeah, some of it. Some yeah. of it did. Some of it did. I think it's context. People ignore context. You know what I'm saying? Always. Like they'll like uh, the Fine Bros and the React Channel did. They'll do like, does it hold up type yeah. shit? And they'll do a um, you know, does Seinfeld hold up? Like, did it age poorly? You know what I'm saying? And the kids will watch very specific um clips of Seinfeld out of context and they'll be like, well, you could never do this nowadays. How could you? But then they free the, 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 the context of the show is that these are fucked up people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like these are terrible people. Yeah. So it's like, of course they're doing bad things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of like, course. And people don't get that, especially if you see it out of context. That's the problem with social media nowadays, man. Everything's out of fucking context. It's all just clips and <sighs> short form bullshit. God. Uh, before we move forward, uh, I've always wanted to know this. I think I didn't know the answer, but what's your favorite shoe? My favorite shoe of all time. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Here's the thing, dog. Okay. You know, I, I will. I do consider myself like a sneakerhead, mm -hmm. but not to the point of like I don't know like release dates and names. I don't care. Shit. What shoe do you like? But I'm just I'm just like giving it a little little preface. Okay. To the people who are like, oh, I'm a real sneakerhead, yeah. and like, and because I don't know what they be talking about sometimes, okay. right? Um, I just like I enjoy shoes a lot. Yeah. All Footwear. Right? Footwear. Mm. Um. And for me, I my go to is just some like um uh, uh some Air Maxes. Air Max one. Air Max, um, I do believe it's the Air Max not not ninety five. No, the ones. I, the Air Max ones. Oh, you said Air Max. I know one. it is because like, you have so many. I of wear them. them all the time. Yeah. yeah you yeah. made those w the Year of the Dragon like oh, custom yeah. ones. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, where am I gonna get this shoe right now? I wanted that. You should order it. You I don't think I got it in time. I think it would Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Now, yeah. Those were hype. I, Thanks, I also really like Air Max ones. I have a bunch of them. Um, I always knew that that was your, 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 your. I just feel flavor. like they go with so much. So much. And yeah. like, not only just like so many of the fact that there's so many colorways, but like the silhouette of the shoe fits yeah. well with like baggier jeans, tighter yeah, jeans, yeah. sweatpants, yeah. shorts, you know? That's hard to find. It is hard to find. You know, because it'd be certain shoes. Like, you know, I love, you know, I got some really dope, um, like Converse, Bape, uh, collab mm -hmm. that I like, I love, but. Um, especially nowadays that like, you know, those look great with some skinny jeans, but then nowadays that like, you know, uh, kids aren't rocking the skinny jeans anymore. You can't really rock some chucks with some big ass jeans. It doesn't, it don't look right. But now the big, have you seen the kids are wearing like big, big ass jeans? They're again? wearing the jeans that we wore in high school. Like Junko shit. Dude. Woo! <laughs> I look at what the kids look like and I'm like, I, that, I, had I known my high school clothing would be popular when I'm 40, <laughs> I would have kept them. Like Miller's Outpost, baggy, baggy Dude, section Jinko shit. Jinko jeans, <laughs> yeah, like dog. fat ass dickies. And it's not even the kids. It's like, actually, it's fashion. Yeah, it's fashion. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I can't even rock with it. I tried. I'm like, this looks so dumb on me. I, cause I, like I, I, the jeans I'm wearing right now, I consider to be baggy, but like now they're wearing like flare jeans. Yeah. I never got into that. That was never my thing. I've had to Boot officially cut. like uh. embrace the fact that I, what I'm comfortable in, like rocking outside, kids will see and be like, that fool's old. Yeah. They know. <laughs> they, they know. They know. Yeah. If your jeans are any way like tapered. Yeah. It's over for Dude, you. Like this man is old. It's over for you. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it, it is crazy. I just, I'm, I'm finally at the point where I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore, guys. Because there's a fine line being 40 and like looking like you try so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Versus like, oh, they, he, he, they get it. Yeah, you know, I would rather not line. look like I'm Me trying neither. too hard. I, yeah. try, I try really hard to look like I'm not trying really hard. Same. It's, ter it's a terrible, Same. I, terrible I, I existence. Kinda, I kind of go out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> like people send me shit. I'm like, I can't, I can't rock this shit, man. I mean, I just took in your shirt. I'm, I appreciate that. Sick oh, shirt. Thank you. Degeneration X. It's very, uh, if you know, you know also. Yeah, you know. Isn't that crazy? It's like, 
nowadays, as we get older, everything is a, if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like this shirt, too. Yeah. Right? Oh, yes. Come on. Wow. One I don't know. Best movies ever. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, I want to, before we move on, I want to uh, apologize because I was supposed to come on last time. Mm -hmm. And I, here, here's what was fucked up, dog. Okay. I had the alert in my phone and everything. Like, mind you, I have everybody book shit out a month ahead of time so I can put you in my seem calendar. pretty organized. Dog, I try to be. Yeah. I fucking, because I, I need, nowadays with the babies, I like, you know, I make sure the nanny's on deck to help wifey with, with both babies because they're both just crazy running around right now. So I try not to leave the house for too long. I book everything way ahead of time, make sure the nanny is here. And I had this shit in my calendar. And I was literally, literally, bruv, on my laptop. It was like, <laughs> it was like 2.15. And you know, iPhone does that dumb shit where they don't alert you of new emails unless you physically, like, purposely go to your emails. Yeah. So I'm on my laptop and I see the email. Hey, Tim, just checking, checking your ETA. And I was like, oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. Dude, listen, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, you're a dad of two. You have 75 podcasts. You're, you're on 65 shows. It's totally, you have a clothing brand. It's fine. Yeah. You're busy. And well, you're here you, now. I brought you a bottle of mezcal. You want a drink? Uh, I'd love to. Let's have a shot. Any excuse to drink nowadays. Now that I, speaking of the children, <laughs> any excuse to get out and get a drink. And <laughs> Do you go out often? No. Never, right? Never. Do you like, do you hang with your wife and like, just like chill at home and like when what time the babies when go to sleep when she's not asleep mm. you know it's like the babies are a bit we, so we've sleep trained them uh they're in bed by 7 30 uh baby girl is you know it, bedtime goes to around eight now mm. which 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 is late staying up <laughs> yeah um and after that chia my wife Probably has it in her to stay up till around nine. Mm -hmm. uh, if if it's a House of the Dragons night, she can do ten. Okay, you feel me? Yeah. Pero like, mm. and then I'm up, bro, because that's my only time to get work done. Yeah. So I try to force myself to either edit or go through emails. I'm up to like midnight. Wait till the whole house is asleep to get your real work done. Yeah, I have to. Bro. I mean, I don't know what it's like to be a father. <laughs> I'm having trouble with this. Okay. I was like, I hope people aren't watching me struggle with this plastic. Most thing. people probably will listen to this anyways. You know why? It's because I keep my nails clean and trim, all right? Take some notes, you dirty motherfuckers. Right, I actually, like, I was out last night and, and someone was like, do you get manicures? And I was like, yeah. Like, oh, I just noticed they're buffed. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, well, my hands are the star of the show all the time. All I do is cook. That, so, all the facts, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? They can't be gross and like, chewed up and shit a girl's like you look so buff and you're like thanks she's like no you look buffed no like I your <laughs> fingernails are shiny do you enjoy a mezcal i do look i have a bottle back there oh yeah cool mezcal do you like uh, is it the smokiness that you like you know um i do enjoy the smokiness you like like scotch i like scotch I like that smoky peatiness of scotch i think something happened you know the first time i had mezcal of course you you drink it and you're like oh this tastes like a boot this a tastes smoky like a, boot. a boot that someone burned. Cheers, bro. Cheers, bro. Thank you, bro. And the then way. one day, you're like, I think I like boot. <laughs> Alcohol in general is like, doesn't taste good. I don't know, like, who are you? you Dude, know? I have this. Let's take this. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Cheers to you. Mm. <sighs> is this a preference of, of, ooh, that is smoky. This is really good. No, I've never, um, I've actually never bought this, mm. but I went into a liquor store a couple minutes away, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, for mezcals and like, you know, like añejos and shit like that, when I'm trying to find a new one, because I love like, as far as a reposado goes, I love like, um, you know, like the bougie ones, mm -hmm. like fucking classy Azul and shit like that. Even though people are always in my comments, you know, man, they had sweeteners and they had super like, uh, you know, that's just like fucking like Hollywood shit. I'm like, I don't care. I like yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I do up. not care. Yeah. Right? But. As far as a, like a mezcal goes, in my head, I'm like, if it looks like it was just bottled by a little Mexican lady, just really simple and basic, that's the type of shit I go I for. kind of agree, and I like the logo. It's a cool logo. Yeah, the logo's a little Mexican lady. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Madre mezcal, by the way, for anyone who is Not curious. sponsored yet. Not sponsored Madre yet. hit me up. When was the first time you got drunk? <sighs> first time you I got drunk. That? Wait, I, how old are you? <laughs> Don't worry about all that. I'm trying to maintain the facade that I'm you still look young. You amazing for your age. Well, thanks, man. Whatever age that might be. Exactly. Because <laughs> I'm, you know, here's the thing, dog. I'm still like auditioning and stuff. I'm still trying to be a Hollywood actor, mm. right? So I feel like as an Asian man who does not age. Um, I, I think we're the same age, but it's fine. 
I'll just I'll pretend like I know. Good. I <laughs> I still like even though it, it it is irrelevant, right? If I'm auditioning for something, but I do feel like there is a part of the public persona that weighs in when someone is looking at you for a movie or something for like sure. that. So I I try to not like pretend to be younger than I am, but um I do try to maintain like like oh you know I I could audition for a college part. I'm past auditioning for high school parts still, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that but I feel like I can still do college, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I, I maybe maybe even late twenties, right? I can see it. Uh mid twenties even. Dare I say sixteen, just kidding. But uh nineteen for sure. Thanks. You could be 19. You know, put a little, little makeup on me? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, what was the question? <laughs> do you remember the first time you got drunk? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I do, actually, because I was kind of a late bloomer. Um, if if you look at, like, high school drinking as, like, the the starting point. You know what I'm saying? I never really drank in high school. A little bit here and there. But first time I remember really being, like, drunk. Uh, prom night. Oh. Because uh, I was prom king. Thank you very much. Careful. Paramount High. Careful. Uh, and uh, so, of course, we're like, let's get fucked up, right? And I got a hotel room. Bottom shelf, the most disgusting vodka. Of course, vodka. Pop off. Well, uh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's the worst. Like, the smell of rubbing alcohol, but taste, you know? Just, ugh. But you know, after a while, you start to just it just goes down like water. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So this you got to get the, past that that point where you're just like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this was the first time I remember just like blacking out. You know, the homies took pictures of me just like laid out, like Jack in the Box burgers on my nipples, and like they're just throwing ketchup packets at me and just like fuck it with me. Um, very very drunk. Did not even have sex prom night. <laughs> And uh, it was, you know, just it just just drunk with the homies in a hotel room. You, you know, did you have a girlfriend back then? I didn't, but I took a baddie to prom. Hell yeah! Needless to say, it, you know, it was a fun night, regardless. But, um, yeah, very very drunk. Popov. I have vodka. a vision of like ketchup packets being thrown on you as burgers are on your nipples. Yeah, you have no shirt on, obviously, for some reason. No shirt on. Also, me and the homies, <laughs> uh, high school homies, we used to play a game called the Naked Game. Okay. Where the whole <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be great. <laughs> the whole point of the game, I don't know how this started, was uh, was to come out, like everybody would be hanging out, and then someone might say, "All right, man, I'm gonna go pee real quick." And then you come back butt naked with something covering your junk, like Shut whether it's like this up. or that. And then it was just like, 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 what the fuck are you doing? Ha ha ha. And then it kind of evolved. And then we started like, you would have to make a pun. You know what I'm saying? Like you'd come out with this, or not a pun, but just a little one-liner. Like, anybody want a shot? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit like that, you know? So uh, there's pic <laughs> there's pictures of me uh, like playing the naked game, just like fucking super drunk. Um, yeah, Jack in the Box. Um, jumbo jacks just on my nipples. That's fucking funny. So you got big nipples, is what you're saying? No, no, they were tiny jumbo jacks. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> First time I got drunk, it was also in high school, uh, as we do. Mm -hmm. I feel like kids today don't really drink. They're more like doing other terrible things and smoking vapes. I think they'd be drinking, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying. To, I'm looking out for you guys. Okay? <laughs> uh, I was in high school. I went out with my boys before, way before Uber. There was, uh, in, I'm from Montreal. There was this guy named Frank Kiss. Weird name. Frank Kiss. Kinda, and you guys were legal to drink at 19 in Montreal, right? 18, actually. 18. Yeah, oh, okay. the rest of Canada is 19. <sighs> so like your wife is Canadian. She can only start drinking at 19. But as we know, you started drinking years before that. I was going to bars at 14, which is oh. ridiculous. You're so... You think that, that's that French-Canadian shit. It is that French-Canadian uh, shit. Parlez-vous français? Oui, je parle français. Oh, voulez-vous toucher mes fesses? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that means would you like to touch my butt? It is, uh, is. It's what, the only French I know. It's so funny. Does Chia know French? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she's she's from out there, so... Yeah. Uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, specifically. No, I know. Okay. I remember. Okay, word. Did you take the kids there yet? Yes. Oh, for, really? For family Christmas trips. And oh, then nice. Weird ass October. You went to Christmas there? Yeah. Fucking freezing. Oh, terrible. Never Holy again. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I avoid Canada at all <laughs> costs during yeah. the winter. Yeah, Chia is there now. Is there now. She's like, we did it once with both kids. She's like, never again. No, it's bad. Um, all right, sorry. Continue. High so, school. So we're in high school. We, this guy named Frank Kiss, he used to drive <laughs> like minors. Mm. Sketchy now that I think about it. <laughs> But no, all of our parents knew who he was. Yeah. And he would had a van and he'd drive us and he had candy <laughs> and he had candy in his van. It was the sketchiest oh, thing. God. But he would drive us to and from, like no problem. He Everyone. was the designated driver for the underage drinking kids. Correct. Okay. That's that that's like it's it was legit. Yeah, it sounds bad, but if it's, our parents didn't know about it, but our parents knew about it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we went out to a bar and 
for some reason, me and one other dude got completely shit faced. And I was wearing this. This is like 1999. Okay. Okay. I was, my style was like, I was wearing like a nylon, like picture a leather jacket, but nylon. <laughs> okay. So, so like if it rains, it like beads off. Anyways, long story short, got completely shit faced, walked into a, uh, like a Starbucks, looked left, looked looked left, looked right, uh -huh. and started throwing up as I was walking to the to the bathroom. But I didn't want it to go anywhere, so I went like this. Oh. I covered my mouth, and the the puke spurted out the sides oh. and hit the barista in the face, and oh. hit, and hit the people in the face that were sitting having a coffee. It was terrible. That is terrible. It was terrible, and that was the first time I ever got wasted. Wow. Yeah. I have a a very uh, it's a terrible story as well, but it doesn't affect other people. only affects me. That's, I'm the worst. A, a New Year's, for New Year's, we'd always go to my boy uh, P.D. Flo's house, P. Pedro Flo. Flores, all right? We'd go to sick his house. Sick Everybody sick would just drink. Um, and I remember, and he had to tell me about this. I vaguely remember, all right? And I was drinking, 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 and I had to poop. I remember this. Right. I'm, a, I'm a big pooper. <laughs> like at any point and anywhere i just you like like public bathrooms no problem yeah no no no, no problems good i actually you. just and i just enjoy pooping. planes huh on a plane yeah wow for sure good for you thanks <laughs> that's a skill i'm not gonna lie you know i just a, a long time ago i just i realized that like i'm not gonna hold this yeah. i'm just gonna i'm just gonna let it happen bad for your bowels yeah i i bet yeah so <laughs> i i was pooping and i was also very drunk okay and <laughs> <laughs> And I remember I had to throw up, right? Oh, so God. I had to like, I'm like, I'm, but I'm pooping. I'm like, ah. So I tried to move my junk out of the way so I could throw up into the hole of like that. Of precision like, puking? Yeah, the precision, <laughs> try to be precision. Okay. But luckily it was like, it wasn't like projectile. It was just like a, you know, when you kind of just a burp, yeah. puke. And so I tried to get into like the space in between my legs and the toilet seat and move my junk aside. But all I remember, and this is what Peter told me the next day. He's like, bro, you just, I just heard you from the bathroom screaming. Oh, I puked on my ding a -ling. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't remember that i kind of remember oh my god like barely yeah yeah <laughs> that's wild that yeah. is wild all right yeah. speaking of wild yeah. next shot or sure man what, what are we talking about here what i'm talking about whatever you're talking about by the way these shot glasses are, are almost 100 years old are they really yeah. for, the, real, for real they're uh original seagram's whiskey shots from my great-grandparents from your great-grandparents yeah. amazing pretty crazy cheers my parents are. What is your ethnic background? I've never known. I am white. Yeah. But spicy white, though. You got the dark hair. No, you know what? I thought it was spicy white. Uh. I thought I had some North African in me. Okay. I am 100% Eastern European Ashkenazi Jew. Okay. Yeah. I would consider that spicy white of some mm, sort. It's more like bland, like boiled white. But it's like, a <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a, a debatable, you know, you got like your own types of like flavor and ethnic dishes, though. Mostly beige boiled food. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, I, what was like your household, like, you, what was your mom's, like, her dish that she made? Okay, so I cook for a living, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I've made some of the craziest shit out there. My mom is the most, she's a great, great cook, but she makes, like, three things. One of them is spaghetti mm, and meat sauce. Course. Go to, yeah. Go to. Really good. Mm -hmm. The other thing is stovetop stuffing okay fire as well in, yeah. no no but like inside chicken breast okay so like oh, rolled like chicken, chicken breast, breast. yeah okay, exactly great 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 and the other thing is a broccoli and cauliflower like cheese casserole okay oh so very white very white but it sounds great so i grew up kosher actually really which is hilarious because i like you know started my career yeah. cooking bacon yeah yeah and i make yeah. like the dumbest shit but <laughs> i was i grew up being kosher and my, I'm, I'm putting my parents on blast here. And then like all of a sudden they're like, eh, we're not going to be kosher anymore. It's like, why? It's like, we, it's too expensive. So, like, oh, so, so it was never really about the religion. It was just about, you know, you couldn't even afford it. So it's like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, I get it. I get it now. I actually thought I had some North African mini. Like, so there's two types of Jews. There's like the Ashkenazi, which is white and the Sephardic, which is like Arabic. Okay. Okay. And I, I have dark features. Like I can pass for Italian. I could pass for Greek. I could pass for Arabic. I can totally. pass for Armenian, like yeah. all that shit. And I was doing my 23 and Me, and it comes back, and I'm 99.9% .9 Eastern European white as uh. fuck. 0.1% Norwegian, so even whiter. Oh, very you know? white. Oh, so you're white, white, yeah, white. I'm so white. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I would not think it. Because you could totally pass. If you were like, yeah, I'm like a quarter Mexican or like. I could do it. 
for sure. Yeah. And I also grew up like very public, public sector. So all my friends were like Greeks, Italians, Arabs, Indians, all types Jamaicans, of okay, Asians, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Koreans, Vietnamese, Montreal has a huge Vietnamese population. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the French Vietnamese. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Filipino. Not a lot of, not a lot of Thai at all in Montreal. Yeah, well, you know, we're, yeah, I wouldn't think so. Uh, well, sucks for you guys, man. Seriously. I've been to La Banquise. Oh, you've been to Montreal? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's where I learned the uh, Voulez-vous toucher mes fesses from a Montreal girl. Oh. Yeah. So it was a while ago. Yeah, a very long time ago. Okay. I, and I didn't, I didn't touch her butt. It was Speaking just... of you in Canada, yeah. I have to single this out. I probably have told you this before. One of my favorite, not even just my favorite video of you, mm. one of my favorite videos uh, of all time. Same. Same. You know what I'm talking about? Of course. Okay, you and Jess Rain? Yeah, it's Dude, like my fucking. I watch that all the time. Still, dog. You know when you go to YouTube and you're allowed to set that one. It's that. It's that. <laughs> that's that's how much I love <laughs> that video. <laughs> I'm so proud of that shit, dog. It's, it's so like, good. So uh, for background, yeah. All right, for context, if y'all don't know, uh, Just Rain, very popular YouTuber. When he was uploading a lot yeah. uh, from Toronto, uh, great guy too. Very hilarious, guy. good dude. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the people just in the space that I was just a fan of his shit. You know what I'm saying? And so. He, we were like, we were always talking about like, yo, we need a collab, we need a collab. And one day he texted me, he was like, bro, I have this idea for this video. It's fucking weird. And he's so like, weird. I don't know who else I would be able to do it with though. And I'm like, bro, I love your shit so much. I don't even want to know. Oh my God. Whatever it is, dog, I'm there and I'm down. You didn't even know. No. Okay. You, it was at. Well, how does he, how do you even describe it to somebody? You can't. You know what I'm saying? Wait. <laughs> just for, for everyone who wants to know, it's basically like Tim and Just Rain. Like it's like a dance off, but it's so much more than that. Yeah. And it was during what was that festival in Toronto? Oh, Buffer Fest. Buffer Fest in Toronto, RIP. And mm -hmm. um, it was like there's so many funny things that are like random in that video. Like you're on the street <laughs> in a parking lot. Yeah, yeah. At one point, there's like a construction dude like looking <laughs> at you guys. Like what the fuck is happening here? Yeah, just not even planned. Yeah. It's like cold. Oh man, it was, it's just, if you don't know, go check out that video. It's called, uh, you, you could look it up, I think on Just Rain's channel, it's called, um, well on mine it's called Best Video Ever uh, Dance or some <laughs> shit like that. It's so good. It's the it's best, so and, he, and here's what's great about this video, right? Because it's so fucking weird. Uh, the comments, right? And this is, this is like, pr like, I'm proud of this shit. Like the comments are everything from like, what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> to literally, bro, people leaving paragraph long analysis of what they think the video oh, represents. Yeah. Some Christopher Nolan shit. Yeah. And you know what? They're right. Or. It's or, to interpretation. Who knows? Yeah. It's yeah, up yeah, to yeah, your yeah. imagination. I love that shit so much. It's so good. <laughs> it's so like, I'm like playing it back in my head right now. And there's like levels to it. It's art, dog. It, bro. Yeah. You need to figure out how to like reprise that <laughs> we somehow. Were, so we talked about doing a follow-up, but this fool was like, man, honestly, if we were to do a follow-up to this video, I want to like do it in the jungles of Peru or something. <laughs> so we would have needed a budget, yeah. you know? But yeah, and then he kind of, you know, he fell off the he face of the- He chose to yeah, take a step back. Take a little break, but he's back now. Well, he has that show on Canadian television. Does he? Yeah, there's a show. I, I knew he was doing a show. I didn't know it had dropped. It's basically, I forgot the name, forgive me, uh, but it's basically like Atlanta, but Sikh Canadians. Really? Yeah. yeah. Scripted. Scripted, yeah. Tight. Yeah. Back then you were Timothy De La Ghetto, and then by what, three years ago, you, you went to your real name? Yeah, during the pandemic, I decided to change my real name. Mm. Yeah. It was like, a, just I had a whole kind of like, um, I wouldn't say an existential crisis, but you know, uh, the pandemic kind of makes you think about life and shit, you know? And I, and I had been debating using my real name for a while, but then I was like, ah, you know, it's part of my branding and blah, blah, blah. And people were like, ah, don't do it. It's like, you, some people, so many people know you as this. But you know, during the pandemic, I really started thinking about like, my legacy and if i was to get sick today and die do i want to be remembered by this like youtube name i've randomly said during a freestyle you know and i was like no nah, that's not really what i'm about um like granted like a lot of it was kind of inspired by what i wanted to do right but when i really thought about what i my goal um which was like at the end of the day i'm trying to you know uh put on for like asian people and asian guys and um and I, I, you know, a big part of what I do is to try and make like um, just Asian people be proud of like who they are and where they come from and the culture and their food and their name and their language. And 
And I was like, okay, while I'm when I'm accepting awards, like, do I want to be accepting awards as Timothy Delgado? It's like, no, nah, I should I should use my real ass government name, like let people know who I am, you know? Um, because like the original thought process was, I need a stage name. Who's gonna be able to say Chantarangsu, right? But then I was like, man, if if I'm if I get to the point where that I see myself getting to, like, of course they'll know my name, right? If they can say Schwarzenegger, they can say Chantarangsu, yeah. you know? So, um, I was just like, yeah, let me let me use this time where the world is kind of like resetting and and use it as a time to like just reset and embrace my long ass last name um, and show that like I don't need to water it down, you know, Uh, especially for all the, you know, little little Asian kids out there who feel like, oh, you know, my name is hard to pronounce or, you know, because I remember being in school and feeling like I needed to. Uh, hide in a corner if my parents called me because I didn't want them to hear me speaking Thai or whatever, you know, because I was embarrassed. Um, but then, like, that's silly, right? Because I'm, and then I, I realized how silly that was because I'm like, just because, just because they don't, they don't recognize it doesn't mean I should be ashamed of it. You Sorry, know? your name's not one syllable ending in th, you know, yeah. like Smith. <laughs> Shout out to Will Smith. Though. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, so, I put on for Asians too. Check it out. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I got a whole, there's literally 20 Asian people here running around grabbing him tea and like cleaning his, I no, only, <laughs> I only employ Asians, this is true, it's, uh, it's actually true. But yeah, man, you know, just trying to put on for my people. No, I like that. At the end of the day. I like that, and you know what, it's so funny because you think about like, I, and I know I grew up with like a very diverse group of friends, and I, I, you know, even though I'm very white, um, and I took turkey sandwiches to, to school. I was <laughs> sure, great. Uh, yeah, sure. But I was always fascinated with like the bento boxes and the like metallic like carafes and shit that like my Indian friends would bring and mm. like my Asian friends would bring. And it's like, and do you think it's a, it's a, it, like the kids today are feeling that same sort of embarrassment or like, are they like, fuck that? We got great food. You know, you know? I, I think it's both, right? I feel like, um, of course, you know, times are, are different. Times have changed. I think, I think maybe the kids are a little more open and realize like, you know, maybe it's not, it's just not cool to be ignorant anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think, and I think schools in general are kind of pushing more for, you know, diversity and embracing diversity and equality, and learn, too, and right? equality yeah. and learning about each other and shit like that and all that fucking bullshit. Yeah. But like, but also, you know, I feel like, yeah, there's always going to be dumbass people that raise dumbass kids, you no know, no matter what, no matter no what, matter it's, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. But yeah. You know, just trying to do my part. I like that. And also, man, you know, like, you know, uh, as we said earlier, the older we get, the fewer people know where Daylight Ghetto comes from. Mm -hmm. So there was a whole lot, like, there was some people, like, on Twitter who were like, you know, why why are you calling yourself ghetto? If, like, you know, like, well, what do you, you know, like, they was hitting me with the, uh, what are you trying to, like, appropriate and this and that. And, uh and, you know, like, yeah, arguably, I, I did grow up in a part of Long Beach, which people would consider the ghetto, but that wasn't really what it was about. It was from the Fresh Prince, you yeah, know what I'm saying? So, the opposite of ghetto. <laughs> yeah, you know? so I was like, let me just, let me just take this time to just embrace the long-ass last name and, you know, uh, use and put that phase aside. Uh, but I'm not, like, mad if people call me Timothy Dale Ghetto, because like, that's how they know me, you know? Yeah. That's like, I'm not- I still re- reference you as that. Like yeah. if I'm talking to like old like old school people that I know and it's like oh you, who are you filming with today I'm like Tim Delgado is coming over you know yeah exactly um, while you were doing that during the pandemic is that when you, is that forgive me but like is that before or after you first started getting into the food like part of your brand that was like uh, V two of you right that was after yeah there's been some phases I mean mind you it's been like eighteen years I know, you know? it's a lot it's a so lot. Uh, pandemic was after. I began to pivot into the food space okay. um, because there's a bunch of Send Foods episodes where, you know, I'm still Timothy Delgado, mm-hmm. you know, and even like we were shooting pandemic versions of Send Foods and like, yeah, I'll still Timothy Delgado. And then I kind of midway made that switch. Right. And that just kind of happened uh, kind of randomly. You know, I, I always liked food and was like a food dude, you know. And well, could, before you started doing your brand, yeah. that brand, we used to see each other at the Food Beast events all the time. Yeah. You know. So you're always like doing it leisurely. So I was a food guy. Yeah. I just like eating food. I like to, especially when I got a little bit of money, mm. you know, it was like, I want to eat all these things that I saw on the food network that I couldn't afford growing up. My family couldn't afford, yeah. you know? So I really kind of just opened myself. Like, I just, I like trying other shit and, and like what people might call weird shit, you know? And so um, I hit my boy, David So, who I also knew was a foodie. And when we started doing Send Foods, uh, the main thing was like, hey, let's go to food festivals and eat a bunch of food and get drunk and kind of approach food in a way that wasn't so uh, like pretentious mm-hmm. that maybe people would watch the Food Network and, and feel like, you know, oh, like, oh, this you got to be bougie to understand all this. And I was like, let's just 
attack it like two dudes that just enjoy food. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, you know, and I'm not gonna lie, we might get a little pretentious now that we've kind of really <laughs> learned. We're learned a bit. It's years later, you but should. It, yeah, you should. exactly. You've evolved. You know? So, but uh, and then I initially was gonna do that show with a different person every episode, but I was like, "Or do y'all want me to keep doing it with David?" And they were like, "Please keep doing it with I David." I mean, the, the camaraderie is amazing. Yeah, so you know? now it's it's a whole thing, you know. Yeah, and then you you had signed with Thrillist. You had that series with Thrillist. Thrillist picked it up. They picked up Send Foods, and then blessings they were able to take it all over the country and we traveled going to different food festivals and whatnot and then i don't know what happened to them they just kind of fucked off into the into the fucking i don't know into the abyss and uh i changed the name and started doing the same show under a different name and yeah now it's called when foodie calls yeah that's fine (laughs) i uh i remember running into you at tender fest one year yeah i had i think you were with me and like it was like it was like anchorman like you were with your crew and i was with my crew and it's like so fancy to see you here (laughs) You and Ricky, are you guys still doing your podcast? Or yes, can I yes, get on that? Or of course, I'm just kidding. I was excited. Oh, you it saw was the that tweet. tweet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was that tweet. I was. I actually saw it last night, and then Diane came. She's like, "You got to ask him about this." I was like, "I saw this already." How annoying, right? It's just like, dude, do your due diligence. You know, like what the fuck? At the very least, yeah. Because, like, okay, so for context, here, guys. Yeah. Uh, I have a content. I have a podcast. I do with my boy Rick and our and our other co-host Nikki Blades. Um, I've been doing it for about like four or five years now. Fatty, by the way. And, oh, yes. She's great. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you want me to hook you up? We can talk about that later. <laughs> yes. She's also a big foodie. And we have guests from time to time. Um, I don't really like having guests on that I, I don't know already in yeah. real life. But, you know, sometimes, you know, if I feel like, oh, okay, it'll be a fun conversation. Sure. So this dude, random dude, emails me. And he's like, he's like, hey, man, um, do you still do that podcast with Ricky? If you do... I'd, I'd love to come on. And I was like, and I, I couldn't help but just be like, what? Like, <laughs> who are you? Like, <laughs> 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 like, how you gonna say, hey, bro, I don't watch this shit. I don't know if it still goes on, but can I get on though? Can I get that free promo? Yeah, it was like, it was so silly to me. So I kind of felt the way about it. I sent it to the internet to be like, am I tripping here? Like, is this, is this weird? Like, I don't want, I want, I don't want to say disrespectful because, you know, like maybe he just fucking didn't know and he doesn't know how to email. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, is this, it's definitely the wrong way to go about it. I have so many thoughts about this. <laughs> I have so many thoughts about this because like, okay, now you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. You're being a nice person. I try to do that. Good on you. Yeah. Okay. I fucking, I would love, I love hating. So let <laughs> me, me just, too. let me just hate on this for a, a hot do. second. If you don't, you're like, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he doesn't know how to email. Maybe he doesn't really know technology. Maybe he doesn't know how to use the internet and he's using a StarTac, you know? <laughs> For those who don't know, that's a Motorola flip phone. Uh, <laughs> why is he asking to go on your very trendy, like very current now podcast? Yeah. Okay. It's a real fucking, you ever seen Scarface? Yeah. You know, when he's like, you know what a hazer is? It's a pig that doesn't fly straight. <laughs> That's what that guy is. Okay. I think it's his 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 etiquette is all wrong. Yeah. Cheers. Don't do that. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Like maybe send you a DM being like, dude, what's good? Long time. Create a little bit of banter. Here's the thing. No, I didn't know this guy. You don't I, even know him. No, stranger. Even worse. Here's what he should have done, right? Because Here's the thing, man. Even if you're lying, you know what I'm saying? Be like, yo, bro, love the podcast. Love what you do. No, no. Here's what you do first. Fucking Google first. Yeah. Is it still going on? You know what I'm saying? Instead of being like, hey, man, is this still a thing? Uh, and if so. I- <laughs> yeah. Because, like, that's just not how you approach somebody when you're asking for a favor. You feel yeah. me? Here's a lesson I learned, right? When I, when I interviewed for California Pizza Kitchen, all right? Fucking life lesson, which helped me um, in my career. Mm. Uh, especially in Hollywood. I, I sat down for this interview at California Pizza Kitchen. Now, mind you, just to give a visual, this doesn't relate to the story, but I went to go turn in my job application. I'm wearing fucking <laughs> LRG puffy jacket with the fur, fucking Tim's, not dressed for a job interview. And I walked up and I handed the <laughs> application. He's like, you want to interview? And I was like, right now? He's like, yeah, sure. I was like, I have, I have fur on. <laughs> He was like, it's fine. It's fine. I was like, all right, cool, cool. I sit down. We're going through the whole interview process. And I know I learned. Now, I actually took a class in high school to an ROP class to learn like tips on how to interview for jobs I and did shit the like same that. Thing, by the way. Did you really? Yeah. How to interview and how to be an interviewer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Interviewee, interviewer. So it comes in handy, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. And one of the things they teach you is like, you know, um, make this company feel like 
you chose them for a reason. Like, oh, you know, I love to eat here. I love the food. I love the customer service. I feel like I could be a valuable blah, 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 right? Sat down, I'm doing my whole spiel. We go through this part. He's like, okay, let's pretend you're a server. I'm like, cool. He goes, and he, he, before that, he asked me, what's your least favorite food? I'm like, I don't know. I kind of like everything. He's like, mm, if you just, just pick something you don't really like. I was like, I don't know, bell peppers, I guess. This guy's like, tell me about your bell pepper pizza. And I was like, Ooh. I was like, oh, okay. Um, okay, well, to be honest, I don't. And he went, ah. and I went, oh, oh, run it back, run it back, run it back. He goes, okay, tell me about your bell pepper pizza. And I said, I love this pizza. And he went, there you go. <laughs> That's, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see where you're going with this. And I feel like, you know, look, man, people will call it fake. But you got to realize this is work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to butter, you got to butter it up a little bit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got to lube it up a little bit before you put it in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, or else everybody's going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, for sure. You got to make it seem like you want to do what you're about to do. Mm-hmm. Like get on someone's podcast. Don't just be like, yo, you still doing this? Hit me up. You got to hit it with that hot tour. Spit on that oh, thing. You get me? I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. Ugh. Give it a little foreplay. Fuck. <laughs> You're right, though. You do. Good for you. you. This, this, that was good. That was good. <laughs> so that podcast that you do with Ricky and Nikki? Yeah. 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 Ricky, Nikki, and Timmy? Ricky Terrible. and Nikki. Eh, I'll, okay. I'll see myself. It's okay. Yeah, um, that's the Chaser, No Chaser podcast. And then I have a Dudes Behind the Foods podcast where me and my boy David So, my foodie friend, we... Uh, it, it started off that we were going to give like BTS on our like food travel adventures. Yeah. But now it's like starts off as food because we bring each other food to eat to start really? off the episode. Yeah. Every episode starts off with us like, oh, I brought you this today to eat. Okay, dude, you got to bring me on if yeah. you're down. Yeah. We, and let me yeah. bring something that I've made. Oh, I'd love to. So that would make more sense than No Chaser probably. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't even. <laughs> I just want to like. I just want to hang. It's just it's the truth. But, pull up. Pull up. Yeah. We rarely have guests on dudes, but that would be great. That'd be it, cool because I could bring some shit. Like, you know, I, I cook some dumb shit. I would love if you brought some dumb shit. Yeah. Because I am constantly making up things and um, making David eat them on the mm. show. So um, I feel like like I don't I don't really like cook, mm. but I feel like I have a good uh, palate for finessing flavors together. Yeah. So I'll like concoct some shit and be like, hey, bro, try this shit out. I was talking about this with someone the other day. Like if you concoct something that pulls from like a bunch of different flavors and whatever, like can you can you see it and taste it in your head before you actually do it? I taste it in my head. Yeah. That's a wild skill. Yeah. I, like, I have so. that skill, too. And like a lot of people that you know, that means you're a super taster. Really? Yeah. I thought being a super taster means that you taste cilantro like soap. But really, <laughs> it's being able to describe and like actualized flavors in your head. Yeah. That's what it actually means. I think, because for sure, when I kind of am like throwing leftovers together and I'm like, maybe I'll put this sauce with it and this sauce with it. Or like when I do weird shit, okay, bro, like I I came up with this shit the other day. It's so fucking fire, dog. It's so random. So, (laughs) have you ever had the Fly by Jing sauce? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I had like a Fly by Jing kick for like a month, Mm -hmm. right? And I was like, this would be fire with some peanut butter. So I like toasted some bread did fly by Jing, peanut butter, do some bacon on there, of course. Popping, dog. You know why that makes sense? Because when you have like, you know what Hunan dumplings are? Yeah. So like peanut butter sauce. Oh, yeah, you yeah, You put yeah. chili sauce on that. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. And you know what? Um, Like maybe maybe it's because of like, there's a lot of peanut butter used in like Thai cooking. Oh, yeah, like, you time. know, and like very uh, peanut sauces and, yep. and curries can be like very peanut buttery. Yep. Um, But my dad, when he was kind of just throwing together some like struggle meals for me, he would make some like... uh. Make some some ramen or some mama noodles. Thai, mama noodles are the Thai version of like, you know, instant ramen, mm-hmm. fire. I feel like they're top tier. But he would throw a scoop of peanut butter into the broth and mix it up. Sick add a little just extra, you know, mwah to it. And uh, man. Dude, peanut butter is hype. I think so. Real hype. Okay, so I'm coming on. I'll bring some shit. Back to your, the fact that you do two podcasts, your show. You're on television, <laughs> yeah. you're acting, you're doing all these things. Yeah. How do you like compartmentalize everything in your brain? Struggling. Like you don't talk about the same thing with David that you do with Ricky and Nikki. I try not to. I try not to. But sometimes I'll have a story that I feel like is so funny that I need to tell them both. Are the yeah. audiences different? Kind of. Okay. Uh, like there is crossover, of course, right? But there are... Sometimes I'll share the same story twice just for that person who maybe isn't watching both, you know? Okay. Um, and uh, and I, I do, I have a list on my phone. Things to bring up to David, things to say on No Chaser. 
smart. Uh, yeah, just Very because smart. I also, you know, I also like legit got diagnosed with ADHD uh, like a few years ago, a mm-hmm. couple years ago. So I am writing a lot more shit down now yep. just because I know how all over the place I am. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, okay, let me make sure I write this down so I don't forget. And I try to, I, I, I need to physically compartmentalize. You know I man? wasn't diagnosed with that, but I started writing shit down. Like I'm, I, my studios in my garage. I have like on my garage doors, it's just like a whiteboard that I just write shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to cross it off and like saying you've did it, it's like a beautiful thing. A hundred percent, man. And I feel, you know, I, I, I talked to a little Zoom doctor just to see if I, if she legit thought I had it because I feel like you know so many people think they have ADHD and I felt like I did too. But I'm like, let me, let me just actually talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, no, to- she. <laughs> quick funny story, right? <laughs> I'm so I'm already bad with Zoom calls when it's business, okay? Because I guess I could blame the ADHD. I just have trouble focusing on one person. And when I was like sitting down for this Zoom call with this doctor, I was like, I don't want to make it seem like I'm purposely being all over the place. I'm trying to focus. So I fucking put the computer mouse on her nose and stared at it the whole time while she's talking. The tactic. (laughs) Yeah. So she didn't, you know, so she didn't feel like I was forcing it, right? And at one point, I'm just kind of like talking and I'm like moving around. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, I'm already kind of seeing uh, signs. And then <laughs> you're like, I'm trying so yeah. hard. And at one point I said something. No, no, she said something. And I was like, OK, I'm literally not trying to be funny. But what did you just say? <laughs> and she goes, you're in the right place, my friend. <laughs> so, yeah, that's man. wild, man. That's it's wild that you're able to have a, uh, sounds like a severe case of ADHD, but you're also able to pretty be pretty focused and all over the place because you're you do so much. Like you even coming here, like I don't know know if you knew what, how what we were going to talk about or if you thought about talking about anything or if you're just playing like flying by your flying by gin. You know, what I mean, mean? <laughs> I think that's why the po- I've thrived in the podcast space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my podcasts have never really stuck to any particular topic, uh, so. You know, that's the appeal, right? It's like a good conversation and it's good camaraderie, both of them. You know, when you, you can just sit down and talk for, about bullshit for an hour yeah. or two, it's like yeah, it, work, it makes for a good podcast. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, it so definitely does. I've been struggling to write this movie. I've been trying to write a movie for like a couple of years now. What's the movie about? Well, without saying too much, yeah. um, can you give me like a off camera? Okay, but we, like we can talk about it later because I'm, I'm genuinely trying, interested. Well, I'm trying to write a a, a stupid comedy for me and David, mm-hmm. just kind of build off of what we've already kind of uh, branded. You know what I'm saying? As as a duo, um, food, foodish, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, okay. To, to put it simply, like a new age Harold and Kumar. Like okay. there's definitely road trip aspect to it. Uh, we're brothers, um, and I feel like there's just been so many very like serious Asian stories. Like, I love that more Asian stories are being told, but I feel like so many times it's like, you know, about family and people are crying all the time. Beef. And, yeah, oh, beef was... Beef it was amazing. Was, it was Don't get me wrong. It was amazing. Yeah, beef was so great. But it was like, it was heavy. But it was like, it was also fucking like a comedy. heavy. You, you, it, it was a dark comedy. Yeah, very dark comedy. Yeah. And I fuck with that, of course. Yeah. But I, I really, I feel like we need more just stupid comedies, okay. you know? Um, I dig it. So I'm trying to write one for us as my first, like, kind of like, venture into that space Mm -hmm. i got a bunch of weird ideas like on the notepad but for this one i'm like let me just send some very easily digestible funny shit that i would love to do and then if that shit does well and i can get more money to do the weird shit then that's the plan i'm trying to be in my jordan peele bag you feel me like will smith bag for the first like half of my career whatever now it's like i'm trying to ride the jordan peele bag where it's like remember like they did Key and Peele. They were doing silly sketches. And then he did fucking Keanu, which is like a silly fucking yeah. movie. Oh, my God. What a dumbass movie. It was so silly, yeah. right? But like, and now he's, now he's no, like, then Jordan, get now out. he's Jordan Peele. Now he's like, what? This, this man is a filmmaker. No, Get Out was the one. Yeah. That yeah. was like a fucking wild. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to, to see that. I mean, I, I think that that would be a great, first of all, the Harold and Kumar-esque buddy comedy like situation is a great idea. Thanks. Plus, like coming from a uh, Asian perspective, is something that's kind of like doesn't really exist, you know. We just gotta get we gotta get, we gotta get some st- more stupid out there. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> Speaking of something that's not stupid, yeah, talk to me about Goody Brand. Goody Brand, yeah, yeah, clothing brand. Clothes are hard. Have you ever well, tried to do clothes? I, it's hard. Here's the deal: <laughs> I make clothing for myself to wear so that I don't ruin my shirts when I cook. Mm. So, mm. like, I design fun things that like no one buys but me. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't do that. You didn't make merch. You made a line. You made a a clothing line called Goody Brand. You are very perceptive to that. Yeah, 
because that was the main thing I had in my mind yeah. because we were offered the opportunity initially to do a um like a clothing brand when back in the maker days. Yeah. And oh, your maker? Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I had stock too. Did homie. you cash out on that? I sure the fuck oh, did, fuck. dog. It wasn't crazy, crazy. If you don't know what that means, this <laughs> reference, go back to like 2013 <laughs> and Google maker deal. Yeah. Disney, yeah. yeah? Yeah, I had a little bit of stock. Okay. Quick side tangent about that. Um, you know, when I re-signed to maker, I was with them for like a year and then they I re-signed, they gave me a little a little bonus. And I was like, hey, yo, can I get a little more money for this bonus? And um and one of the dudes up there was like, honestly, you know, that's why we gave you the stock, you know, like uh, as like a thank you. And I'm like, ah, can I get more money and less stock? And he was like, you should, you should hang on to the stock. Really? And a couple of different people were like, yo, just so you know, yo, hang on to that stock, man. Some shit, some conversations are happening. Jeez, good yeah. for you. Yeah. Thanks, man. It was, it was great. Yeah. It was great. Um, that was a big, that was the biggest deal in YouTube back then. Yeah. And then it just kind of, you know, went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> fizzled away anyways goody brian so yeah, back yeah, when you were a maker yeah yeah so we got presented with the opportunity to to, to make a holding brand and I, I really i didn't want to uh me and ricky shucks we we didn't want to do something that was necessarily tim tim merch mm. uh we were like can we build a clothing brand that if people had no idea who i was would still like it you know and that was our goal and um man it's been like over shit it's been like probably like 10 years to be That's honest cool brand. wait am i Am I treating this too much like an interview or have you talked about this a million times before? Not really. You're not okay, goody cool, brand. Cool, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cause I've, I always thought it was really cool. Even, I mean, the designs are super unique. I don't know who you have doing the graphic designs, but even when you had that, in, that, um, it was a goody brand sort of like release of something at, uh, Howling Rays in, Pas in Pasadena. The, the designs were fucking tight. Thanks, Double man. Double dragon and all that shit. Like, yeah, oh, fuck. Oh, thanks, dog. Yeah, that was thank awesome. You, thank you. Oh uh, yeah. The designs are kind of a, a, a mix of, me, Rick, and our boy Benji in the group chat brainstorming. Oh, cool. And then we have like a couple of like artists that we we mainly use. Yeah. Um the Howlin' Race stuff was uh that was that was that was big on on my end, like the taking the fucking um Highway to Hell album and remixing it for the Nashville chicken shit. Like, yeah, yeah, a bunch of stuff, man. But it's so hard. Uh, What's hard about it? Clothing is hard. It's so competitive. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I mean everything is competitive, but clothes is fucking hard, dog. Yeah. It's like, you know. I tell people like, yeah, Goody Brand does okay, but it's not like we're like living off of it. You know what I'm I mean, saying? What's the goal? Just to like stretch the brand or to like actually like, you know, like what's the goal there? It'd be great to have a like a just really um big brand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, like, I guess that's always the goal. It would right? be great. But you know, look, I mean, let's say someone was like, hey man, uh, I don't know, fucking Macy's wants to pay you guys a million dollars to just have slap it. Goody on shit. Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> That's always the goal. <laughs> For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. But, you know, it's it's there. It's there. We're struggling. We're struggling, but we're, we're you know, go buy some goodie brand, guys. I fucking love it. I'm just saying. Thanks, man. So what's, so what's, I mean, what's next? I, you're telling me all, are you still doing, you're not doing Wild and Out anymore, right? No, me and Wild and Out broke up back in, I want to say 2019. Well, you had, you had Nick on your podcast, like not long ago, yes, not yes, long yes. thereafter, right? I did. I had uh, so me while I broke out, broke up in 2019. I've I've popped in on occasion here yeah. and there for like they'll do like uh you know oh it's the 20th season you got to pop in for a couple episodes or whatever. I'm like all right, fine. Yeah. Um, and they've they've told me um that like yo whenever you want to come back you can come back because um uh, you know not gonna lie bro it's kind of difficult to find another Asian dude to fill to fill that spot yeah. you know what I'm saying who yeah. can really do it like I did it you know yeah, it was good times man it was it was great I did I did eight seasons six years on that show yeah. um Nick popped up on the podcast uh, maybe like mm, sometime in the past year yeah um I'm actually and he hit me up for this new show he's doing on Amazon Prime of course uh, he's doing a show yeah of course he has more um, shows than children like it's that ridiculous. man is he's he, man we were talking about a, a busy man Nick Cannon <laughs> is the fucking yo, uh, yeah and thirteen kids yeah. And a show for each kid. The kids are named Wild and Out. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> They're named after all the shows. America's Got Talent is the, the girl. Nah, but. Good for him. He, um, he'll always be drumline to me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's such a good dude. Apparently. Yeah. I, I try to tell people that. Like, Nick Cannon is so good for, um, like, genuinely wanting to put people on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody that he brings on to his show is, like, people that he, like, I think really believes in as up-and-coming comedians and, and, like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um. And like, cause he don't have to do Wild and Out. No, like, he, really, he doesn't need to fucking host Wild and Out for some MTV money, right? Yeah. Like, he, I think he does that shit because he's like, let's put on new up and coming comedians and, and youngins, you know? Um, 
and blessings. He brought me onto this new show he does called Council Culture on Amazon Prime. It's like a um, oh, I saw a trailer for that. Yeah, it's like yeah. a uh, you, I guess you could call it like a male version of The View. Okay, but it's not so topical. It's more like discussing like depression and like fatherhood and like he's it's it's like pushed as a um a safe space for men to discuss things that uh you know maybe they're afraid to talk about. You know, and I did like half of the season. It's, it's a good show. That's cool. Watch that on Prime if you haven't yet. Okay, cool. <laughs> good promo. Good promo. Dude, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to the podcast and bringing the Mezcal. Bring us some weird shit to do. Dude, the I am so fucking down. I'll yeah. make something stupid. I make dumb shit every single day. Please, without cheese, please. I'm off cheese. You're off cheese? Yeah. Lactose? No, it just it makes me break out. Oh, okay. So I'm trying to be cute. That's fine. I can maybe bring a dessert of sorts. I mean, no, I, no, 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 no dessert. No. <laughs> So uh, tell know, me fuck, exactly no, what you want. No, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Make cheese. I'll, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll I don't have to you. do cheese. What about like a fried chicken situation? I love it. Okay. Always. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got some pickled goldfish. I'm going to crust and <laughs> around some some chicken. What? Uh, this is going to get real dumb. It's getting real dumb. Tim, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. If you guys don't already follow him, follow Tim. We'll leave it just a link in the description. Tim. Chantarongsu. Chantarongsu. There's an go. N in there. Yeah. I was testing him. He, gets, he knows his name. Ah. And uh, maybe uh, we'll uh, hang out again soon, bro. Who knows? Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. I'll never see him again. <laughs> Full Discourse is a podcast hosted by me, Josh Elkin, produced by Diane Kang, Melissa D. Mons, and Diamond M. Print Productions. Camera operator, Jeff Liu. Post-production sound by Coco Lawrence. Production assistance by Melanie D. Watson. And music by me.